Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump.com. As you know, Pixar's RenderMan had a huge new release recently that featured a free personal learning edition for non-commercial use. I've seen a lot of people online talking about whether RenderMan or Arnold would be a better rendering engine for them. Now, I've been lucky enough to work with both of the engines in the past, and I thought we could do some side-by-side -side comparisons to see what the differences and benefits of each rendering engine would be. Now, for this comparison, I've chosen the most common uses and workflows that I think people will encounter on a daily basis. So things like caustics and tune shading, we're not gonna get into today. We're gonna kind of deal with the main meat and potatoes that most people are gonna need to render on a daily basis. Now, RenderMan has been split into two engines in the new release. Both the Rays engine, which is the older, more mature engine, the standard of VFX in 3D for many, many years, and now the new Riz engine, R-I-S engine, which seems to be Pixar's response to Arnold, as they seem to kind of both approach rendering and shader setup from a very similar philosophy. All this technology is very capable of creating amazing renders, and both of them are gonna allow for a ton of customization of your shader setup and render settings. But for each of these, I'm just gonna kind of go with a basic workflow, a baseline of this is what you're gonna get when you start and how much work you're gonna to need to get it up to that next level. Now there's a lot to cover, so let's dig in and start looking at stuff. For our first setup, I wanted to do a scene with HDRI only lighting and high poly counts. So you can see here, I have my scene that was the set of the short film, The Call, and it's a pretty heavy scene with 1.23 million polys. And this should give us an idea of how each of the engines handles a heavy scene. And for each of these setups, I'm not gonna go through a step-by-step. -step. I'm gonna kind of do this more as an overview, point out the steps that are needed to create something. <laughs> Otherwise, we're gonna be here for about 12 hours. So for Arnold to set up a scene like this, I'm gonna turn to the AI standard shader, which if you go into your hypershade and take a look, you'll see one AI standard. And let's take a look at the tree for one of these guys here. We'll look at this tree branch. And you can see that we've got a diffuse texture that is hooked up here to the color channel. We've got a black and white opacity mask, which is down here under refraction and is plugged into the opacity setting. And then finally, we have a normal map, which I've plugged into the bump map setting, and I've set it to use tangent space normals and a depth of one. So everything here is very standard, and that is how each of these materials have been set up. Some do have normal maps, some don't. Some do have opacity maps, some don't. So there's a number of different materials, but they're all using the AI standard shader, which is kind of the Swiss army knife of Arnold. Now, if to set up the light, all I did was come in and add in a sky dome light. You'll get your Arnold sky dome light here, and in the color channel, I've plugged in this HDRI file. Now, I've also tried give the color temperature a little more yellow. So I've clicked on use color temperature, drop the temperature down a little below white, a little more into the warm range. I'm trying to go for something a little more sunsetty, And I've tried to do this across all of them. So let's go ahead, open up the IPR renderer. And we're gonna see how long it takes for Arnold to give us a decent idea of what this scene is looking like. Now with Arnold, I have noticed that the first time you run the IPR, it's gonna be a little slower. And I think that's because it has to calculate out a cache file of ray bounces. Now I believe the cliff also has some non-manifold geometry, which also confuses Arnold and actually slows it down a little bit. But even with that, we're gonna get a pretty fast result. There we go, so it's calculated its first pass and now we can see the refinement happening and you can see it's moving really, really quickly, especially for a scene with this many textures and this heavy a poly count. So we can go in and we can start interactively working with it. Uh, we can turn our light and we'll see the scene update very, very fast. We'll go ahead and put it back where it was. 
we can come in and play with that color temperature a little bit more, how quickly Arnold can tear through some of these renders. Okay, so let's take a look at render settings here in Arnold. Arnold's render setup is really simple and straightforward. It's the number of bounces from your anti-aliasing, your diffuse, your glossy, and your refraction added together to give you a total number of bounces, and that's gonna be the quality level. This is actually set fairly low right now, but even with these very low settings and minimal number of bounces, I'm sure we're gonna get a really beautiful result. I've taken these down to all the way to 2000 and still gotten very usable results from Arnold. The secondary place that you really want to check for your bounces are down here in your ray depth. Now I have my transparency depth turned up fairly high and that's because we have a lot of opacity masks that we have to push through and I want to make sure we have enough bounces that we don't end up with black areas anywhere in the render. When it comes to rendering with Arnold, that's about all I really look to change on a daily basis. Sometimes I'll come in, add in my AOV passes, but as far as a rendering engine goes, it doesn't get much simpler than this. I'm gonna go ahead, render out this image, and then we're gonna take a look at it. All right, so here we have our image out of Arnold, and it has a little gradient that I put in the background to simulate a little bit of the sky. Now, the only thing I don't like about it is that we've really lost a lot of the density of the pine needle trees and the Spanish moss. You know, everything that had an opacity map, it seems the opacity map is being treated very thinly here. Now this isn't a huge deal. This is something that's easy to fix in your hypershade. It's just, this is the base level of where you'll start. And then there are gonna be changes that'll be needed to take it to that next level. So that's our look at Arnold. Let's go ahead and set up this same scene over in RenderMan. All right, so we've got our scene here open and we're gonna use the RIS engine first, the RIS engine. And the first thing that we need to do before we start digging into shader setups or render settings here in RenderMan is talk about linear workflow. This is something that you'll have to deal with if you wanna play with RenderMan. And all that means is that your images, which are usually made sRGB or maybe Rec. 709, they're gonna all have to be converted to linear images before RenderMan is going to be able to interpret them properly. Now, this is not a problem. You don't have to go back to Photoshop or After Effects to do any of this work. RenderMan has a solution inside it, but it is extra steps that you're going to have to do whenever setting up a scene with RenderMan. And the shader I've chosen for our scene in this engine is the PXR Disney shader. And I like it because it's a very dead simple shader as well. It still has a lot of flexibility and power, but it's all done very simply. So you can get up and running on your scene as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead, take a look at that same. Here we have all the same images and the diffuse channel is set here to the base color. Our opacity map is set here in the presence. So that's where you're gonna plug in any black and white maps you have for your images. Finally, our bump node with a normal map is set here to the bump normal channel. Now, each of these images needed to be converted to linear. And the way you do that is you go to your attributes for the image and you add texture controls. And when you do that, you're gonna get an extra tab right here where it says extra render man attributes. And you just need to come down, click on linearize sRGB. By doing that, you give RenderMan the information it needs and keeps you working quickly and efficiently. So each of these have been set up with the Disney shader. And let's go ahead and take a look at RenderMan's controls. Now we can use the buttons up here. IPR will pull up the same as this IPR button and Render will do the final render button. But you'll see here we have a bunch of other controls when it comes to rendering, including bringing up it and it is the render window that RenderMan is going to use. It's not going to use the same standard Maya render view. So if we go ahead and we want to IPR our image, it's going to pass the file over to the rendering engine. And here we go, it's starting to kick into the render. And you can see it works incredibly fast. And you can also see that the black and white masks that controls all of the needles and moss is being shown a little thicker, a little fuller. 
And that's something I really did like, is that I didn't have to go and make modifications to my images. They came out a little more as expected. Now, for the lighting in this scene, we just have a RMS environment light, which you can get to right here by adding this node, or you can come up to RenderMan lights and bring in an RMS environment light. Now the nice thing about the environment light is it will work with either an RIS or RAISE. So if you set up your lights in one and then you want to try the other, you don't have to reset any of those. Those are transferable between the scenes. However, any shaders are not. So if we click on our environment light, we can see that we've got a space for our environment image, which I've plugged in the exact same HDR. I was able to rotate it around the exact same way and I changed its procedural resolution up to 2K. And then I just added a little bit of a tint to the image, again, giving it a little more of a yellowy sunset color. Let's go ahead and take a look at our render settings. Our RenderMan engine here is very simple as well. We have a minimum number of samples, a maximum number of samples, and that's really about all you have to set. If you want higher quality, just bump up these two numbers. But like I said, I feel like this one was heavily influenced by Arnold in the way that the interface is so simple and easy to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at our render here in RIS. And let's bring up the Arnold render and just put them side by side. And we can see the differences between these two. I feel like the RenderMan engine gave me a little more of the color I was looking for. You can see it here in the Arnold renderer in certain areas, but I feel the tone, the light to be a little more yellow was a little more respected here. And like I said, I really do like the way that RenderMan dealt with the with the opacity maps for all the needles and Spanish moss. I feel that it just respected that a little bit better. Earlier I mentioned I might have some non-manifold geometry here from Mudbox when I created this cliff. And you can see Arnold was a lot more forgiving of it. And you can see here that RenderMan was not. So I would have to go back and clean up all of that geometry before it would render without those black holes. Now again, like fixing the needles here in Arnold, this isn't a big deal, but it's just something to notice and understand that this is gonna be a part of your workflow when you choose either of these two rendering engines. So now that we've taken a look at those two, let's go ahead and bring up the same scene again in the Rays engine. All right, so we've got the scene opened again here in the Rays engine, and you can see I still have my exact same environment light set exactly the same, and that's because after I created the first RenderMan scene, I just saved it out, and then I swapped out all the shaders, but left the lighting as is. So for shader setup here in the Rays engine, I went with two different shaders. There's the RMS GP Surface, which is their general purpose surface shader, and that's much like the AI standard in Arnold. It's a general purpose, it's a catch-all, it's a Swiss Army knife. It's gonna handle most of your, most of your shading needs pretty well. But I did some early tests and I found that with all of the different image maps that I was having to use and all the opacity maps, that the RMS matte shader seemed to handle those images just a little quicker. So I used a mix on anything that was a standard image without any alpha channels. I used the general purpose surface shader. Here you can see we've plugged in our image to the surface and we've made sure that our attributes are here and we've set them to linearize on something like the Douglas fir branch, which we've looked at in the other two. We've got the matte shader here. And again, the diffuse is put into the surface color. The opacity is driven into the transparency channel and the bump map needs to be put down here in displacement. You'll wanna go ahead, set it to bump. You'll bring in your normal map plug it into the input normal, and you'll, ch and you'll pick a mode. Now mine was actually created by Mudbox and it was tangent space, so I knew that was the right one to use. But you'll see there's a number of selections here between Mudbox and ZBrush, and you'll just wanna use the one that is best suited for your normal map. 
And the last thing that I found is that the compute, the compute's opacity, I needed to bump that up to medium. Whenever I, for, when I did the first renders, we had huge holes and problems with the transparency. But once I changed that, everything seemed to run very smoothly. Let's go ahead and take a look at our render settings here in RenderMan, in RenderMan Rays. Here, here you can see we've got a lot more options, but still most of these are not ones we're gonna have to worry about too much. The biggest one here is the shading rate. This is our overall quality control, and it defaults to one, but you're normally gonna wanna bring this down a bit. I actually found for my scene, one worked pretty well, but for most scenes, you're gonna to wanna to go down to a lower value, maybe 0.5 to 0.1. Now, that's about it for Ray's setup as well. So let's go ahead, take an IPR of this scene and see where we're at. So once again, it's gonna push all of that information over to the IT renderer or the IT renderer. I'm not sure which is the exact right way to say that. And here you can see, we've got a very different looking preview. Uh, it's a little more, it's a lot more dot oriented where the other ones seemed a bit smoother. This one kind of just gives you a more impressionistic look at your, at what your render is going to look like. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to point out that there is a very different look to the IPR quality. And I feel that this one, it just doesn't ever look as sharp as it will in Arnold or the RAS preview. But let's go ahead and bring up the render from this engine. And you can see here, we've got a very high quality render. It, seemed, it seems like I might need to do some subdivision on the cliff set because we're getting a little bit more of a hard polygon edge here. But I really do, again, like the way it handled the trees and I really like the color reproduction here in this engine. So let's go ahead and bring up all three kind of side by side. And as far as strict just quality of render, I think they're all very good. I think they're very sharp. I think there's wonderful shadows in all of them. I think there's a lot of detail. Now, each of these rendered a little slow. If it was my guess, I would say that RAS was slightly faster than Arnold, but both of them were much faster by a factor of about four to the Ray's engine. I think the Ray's engine took almost about 20 minutes for this frame where the others finished it in about three to four minutes. So just something to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and close these guys up. Let's go ahead and take a look at studio lighting setups with all three of them. All right, so here we have a spaceship that might look a little familiar if you've watched some of the other tutorials. This is the spaceship that I used in a College Humor video a couple months ago. And I've got it set up here with some Maya spotlights. Now, Arnold uses Maya spots really, really well. And you've probably seen, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you've seen me do this setup before, where we drop down the Arnold tag, we bring up our exposure, we make sure we have enough samples. If we wanna soften the quality of the shadow, we'll bring up our light's radius to make it a larger light. And then we can check out the number of bounces that we want each light to contribute. Now, with that set up, I've gone ahead and just used the AI standard shader again. We have a number of maps set up. Now, the one that's new, the two that are new to this one are we have a specular map, which we've plugged into the weight, and we've got a map for the ship lights, which I brought in and put into the emission channel and then changed the scale from one to 0.75. And that's gonna give us those nice bright lights so if we go ahead and we do a little preview render here, you're gonna see it comes up really, really fast. Now, since this one doesn't have as many polygons as our last scene, all the engines are gonna move a lot faster. You can see here, we're almost to a final quality of rendering in just a couple of seconds. Now, like I said, we've got those four lights hitting our model and I think it gives us a really interesting look. 
We've got a lot of nice fine detail. I really love the quality of the light roll off here in Arnold. And I really love the effect of these luminant lights, of the luminant light texture bouncing off the model. So overall, I'm really, really happy with this. But let's go ahead and take a look at the same setup over in RenderMan RIS. Okay, so here we are in RenderMan and you can see we've got a big difference here in our viewport. Whereas before we were able to get a really good view of what our model was looking like, here in viewport 2.0 we get kind of a very washed out view. So I'm going to go ahead switch over to our default quality rendering just so I can get a little more detail in there. And for this setup, I've gone with the PXR LM metal material. And you can see it's got a lot of those same, it's got those same maps set up. And the setup of this material is a little different because everything that you see here isn't necessarily where you're gonna to wanna to plug your maps in. What you need to do when you create the material is you'll see here there's an overlay and you need to click that and then that's going to bring up a secondary set of controls that's for all of your maps. If I go ahead and click into the overlay for this metal channel, you'll see that I've got my diffuse texture hooked up to the color. I've got the light file hooked up to the incandescence. I've got a specular file hooked up to the specular roughness. And I experimented a little bit with adding it to the clear coat as well. The clear coat and the specular are, are the two ways you're gonna add your metallic look. I ended up feeling that only the specular was needed, but it is nice that there are two separate controls so that you can have two different qualities of specularity. So we've got our lights set up and I tried to match these four lights the exact same way I did the Maya spots. Now, while RenderMan will work with Maya spotlights, I thought it might be good to test it with the lights the lights that they intend for its use, which are the geo area lights. So you come down to RenderMan, go to your lights at an RMS geo area light, and I've just got all four of them set up. And they are fairly simple to set up. They've got a shading rate, which much like Arnold had bounces and samples, this is the shading rate. Again, the lower it goes, the higher quality it's gonna be. You've got a shape for your light, an exposure, which you would which will bring the brightness up and down. If you have a color map or resolution or color map resolution, you can bring it in there. You can also change the color temperature of your light or change it with an RGB value. So fairly simple lights to set up and a good amount of controls. So let's go ahead and take a look at the IPR in this one. And again, you'll see this is just incredibly fast much like it was in Arnold. It's just without all of that extra density of polygons, we're just getting really snappy results. And you can see it's got a very high quality render for this as well. Again, really nice specular roll off here and here we're getting some really nice, hard, hot spots. I like the look of the shadows. I think overall, again, we're getting, an, and again, we're getting some nice bounce down here. And I think we're, we've already got something that looks really, really good. So let's go ahead and close this guy out and take a look at that same setup over in the Rays engine. Okay, so we've got our setup here in the RenderMan Rays engine. You can see, again, all the lights have stayed exactly the same. Now, again, for our model texture, I've gone with the general purpose surface shader and if I bring up our tree here, we've got our diffuse set into the surface color. We've got our light map set up to the incandescence and we've got our specular map set into the roughness. And again, there is a secondary specular in this air, in this render man shader as well. And I've added a little bit of it in. So I've got the blend set to 21 and I've got one set of specularity controlled by the map, and then I've got another set of specularity as more of a broad general spec. And I thought that ended up looking really nice. So let's go ahead and bring up our IPR for this one. And you can see that one came up 
almost instantaneously. I did not make an edit there. That's how fast this one worked. So again, you can see all three of them are handling the information really lightning fast. So with the looks at all the different setups set up, let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So here we've got the rays. Here is RIS. So over here, we've got our render man images and here's our Arnold image. And I really feel this one comes down to what makes each image work for you, because I think all of them, again, turned in a fantastic quality render. I really like the light roll off here, but I really like a lot of how the interaction between the specularity and matte areas is handled here and here. I really, really enjoy the heavy bounce that we're getting from our lights here, a little less here, but all these things could be tuned in each engine. I think the only one, the only defining factor for me was here in the Rays engine, I really felt there was a better attention to the texture details. So all of these little details, I just felt were a little better preserved here than they were in either of these, in either the RAS or Arnold engine. But feel free to disagree. I, like I said, I think this is one's a matter of taste. So let's go ahead and take a look really quickly at subsurface scattering in all three of these guys. And you may recognize this guy again. He's from our short film, The Call, and it is the great Lord Cthulhu. Now, I didn't actually use subsurface scattering on him when I did The Call because he was being shot from so far away. But I thought what might be fun here is to bring him in and make him look like a giant Cthulhu gummy bear. So here in Arnold, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Skin SSS shader. And the Skin SSS shader is, again, very easy to set up. If we go ahead and look at its tree, we've got a diffuse map and we've got a normal map. And the diffuse map was set straight here to diffuse color. And the normal map was sent here to the bump mapping. And from there, it was really just a back and forth of each of these sliders, changing out the colors and then changing out the weight and radius until I found something that I thought looked really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at our IPR. And like I said, I'm going for a gummy bear kind of look. All right, and here we go. We can see we have some really nice interaction here. We've got a lot of light being transmitted through the model. And again, we're seeing that we get a really high detailed preview really, really fast here with Arnold. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the weight a little bit here just to show you how quickly we can check out a different look here for the look dev. And we'll go ahead, bring up our weight again on our mid scatter and maybe bring it up again here on the shallow scatter. And you can just see how quickly the Arnold rendering engine is adapting to each of those changes. So there we go. Already we've got a completely different look. And I think it handles the subsurface really, really well. I really like the way the light is falling off as it moves through the model. And I really like how simple this control setup is. All right, so let's go ahead and close out this guy and let's open this one up here in RenderMan. All right, so here we are in the RIS engine. And for the shader here, I've gone with the PIX, PXR LM subsurface. And if we go ahead and take a look at this shader, we can see once again, we've got an overlay where we're gonna put all of our map information. And then here, we've actually got the subsurface information and specular. So if I go ahead and check out the overlay, you can see the diffuse is pumped into color. The normal map is set here to bump. I've got a little bit of specular enabled for the model. And if I come back to my main subsurface controls, you can see they look really, really similar to the ones we just saw in Arnold. We've got a near, mid, and far color. We've got a weight and a length. And then we've also got this unit length, which is a multiplier that you use for the far, mid, and near length. So let's go ahead and take a look at the IPR 
All right, so here we've got our preview render started and you can see it's moving along really, really nicely. It may be moving a little slower than the Arnold, but we're still getting to a very high detailed place very, very quickly. So again, you can see we got some really nice fall off here in our gummy model and I can go ahead and again push up the weight and you'll see that it's going to in, it's going to react very very quickly making look dev really easy so let me pump that weight up put a little more red into it and you can see that much like Arnold look dev is going to be a snap with the RAS engine so with that setup looked at, let's go ahead and move over to our final subsurface version, which is the Rays engine. All right, so here's Cthulhu once again in the Rays version. And for this one, I have once again gone with the general purpose shader. It really is the Swiss Army knife of the Rays engine. And let's go ahead and take a look at its material setup. Once again, the diffuse is being put into the surface color. We've got our normal map being set here in our input normal under displacement. And we've added just a little bit of specularity. But the main thing we're going to want to look at here are our subsurface controls. Now, to be able to get a material to have subsurface scattering, the first thing you want to do is change your diffuse mix. When you start it, when you bring up any other shader, like if I bring up my eyes, you'll see that this diffuse mix is all the way down. And anything above zero is going to start to allow the model to have subsurface scattering. I've got mine cranked all the way over. Again, I'm not going for subtle, I'm going for a gummy bear. And I went ahead and changed the albedo tint to a little bit of that green color. I've added a few more bounces and a few more samples so it'll render smoothly. And I've gone ahead and bumped up my max subsurface depth and the max distance. But other than that, everything else is stock. So let's go ahead and take a look at an IPR of this guy. And you're gonna see right away, it's a different type of gummy bear. Now I'm not terribly surprised by this, because like I've said before, I think the RAS and Arnold engines are very similar in the way they do things and the way they interact with lights. So the Rays engine is always going to give you a, a different look. It's a little different, but I really like what I'm seeing here a lot too. I don't see a lot of the edge lighting, but I really see it kind of scattering throughout the entire model. Whereas you can see here in the chest and the head, we're getting a lot of I feel like there's a lot of illumination, whereas down here, further away in the arm or some of these tentacles, we don't get as much of the effect. And it really comes down to a question of taste again. So let me go ahead and close out this IPR. And let's bring up our three views side by side again. So here's our RIS. Here is the Rays. And here is Arnold. Now, again, each of these rendered pretty fast. I'd say there was about 20 to 30 seconds for each of these frames. Again, I think it comes down to a taste issue. Each of them handles subsurface remarkably well. And I think whichever one you use, you're gonna end up being able to get really high quality results. Now, that's about the end of where I say everything works great in all three of them, because the next few things we're gonna get into are going to be some of the big difference makers. And the first place we're going to take a look is at Samaya Fluids. Now some of you may recognize this element, it's a part of our destruction pack. And the element for the destruction pack was actually rendered with Arnold. So I thought this would be a great benchmark to be able to look at how Renderman and Arnold are both going to handle this exact same fluid. Now if I take a look at the fluid here, in Maya, we're going to see I did a lower resolution version of it. This is about minimum resolution I would even do to simulate a fluid. And down here in the Arnold tab for our fluid, I've got the step size set to 2, filter size to linear, and the phase function set to 0.2. Those are all standard. I haven't actually changed any of the information there. 
again, because again, we just really want to get a baseline of what this is going to look like. We've got two lights hitting our fluid and let's go ahead and take an IPR of this guy. And we're going to see again, we get a really nice fast preview. One thing that happened because of the density of this fluid, we see that Arnold is starting to have a few issues with bouncing back some of the light. So we're getting some little speckles down here at the very bottom. But overall, I think that it's handling the fluid really, really well. Since Arnold has come out, it's been my favorite way to render smoke in both Maya and Fume Effects. So let's go ahead and take a look at that exact same scene over in RenderMan. Now here's again where we're going to see a big difference is Raze is the only one that will handle fluids. The RIS engine will not render fluids. So if you want to go RIS, you're just going to need to render your fluids in either Raze, Mental Ray, Maya Software, whatever, whatever floats your boat. So you can see here our fluid is set up exactly the same, same resolution, same everything, same lighting setup. In this case, I am using Maya Spotlights. And instead of the Arnold tab, I've gone down to the attributes and I've added volume controls for RenderMan. And here we've got a separate shading rate and a volume depth shading rate. And I've got these set to five and two to help clean up a little bit of the look. Normally this is set to 10. And if I go over to my lights, I've said that RenderMan will use Maya Spotlights, but you really do want to come in and add shadow attributes from the RenderMan attributes, because that's going to unlock deep shadows, which is a wonderful technology, especially for doing fluids. That's going to give you a much faster render. So let's go ahead and IPR this guy. Now for this one, I feel the IPR doesn't quite give us as much detail as we were getting over in Arnold, but it's still giving us enough information that if I wanted to go in and change my lighting setup, I would be able to figure out how much light is going to each place and how much and where my shadows are falling. So just something to keep in mind that you're not gonna quite see as detailed an image here as you did over in Arnold. So let's go ahead, close that guy out, and let's take a look at these two side by side. So here's my Arnold render, here's my RenderMan render, and I've got to say, I really do like what RenderMan did here. Without adjusting the shader at all, I feel like it handled the transparency and the fall off of the fluid a bit better than Arnold did. Now you can go in and tune your Arnold fluid to get it to have more of this soft fall off. But again, this is just the baseline and I'm not sure I would do any more work with the RenderMan shader. It might speed up my pipeline a bit to use RenderMan for my fluids. And each of these did render remarkably fast. I would say maybe 30 seconds for each of these two renders to come out final. Again, each one will serve you well for me personally. I really do like what RenderMan did here over Arnold. But now that we've looked at smoke, let's go ahead and take a look at an explosion. And if you watched our tutorial on fume effects versus Maya fluids, you will recognize this explosion. It's the one I created from Maya fluids. Now, just as we saw in the smoke example, we've got our Arnold tab for our fluid container. I've dropped the step size down to 0.1 and I've changed the phase function to zero. So a little bit different in the way I wanted Arnold to handle this fluid. But other than that, I don't even have lights in this scene. I'm gonna let the incandescence of the explosion be the light. So I'm gonna go ahead, IPR this guy. And we're gonna see that it handles the fluid again very, very quickly, but our shader just isn't really translating. If this is what I was designing it to look like, we're really just not seeing a true representation of it here. I really like the quality of the render. I just wish it looked more like what I was intending it to look like. I can go through the shader setup here in the fluid and retarget it to get more of what I'm looking for. 
and that's fine. I just wish that when I was designing it, Arnold would respect the look of it a little more. So let's go ahead and see how RenderMan handles that exact same fluid. And once again, we can only do this using the Rays engine. We cannot look at it in RIS because RIS will not deal with it. And once again, here in the fluid, I've added the extra attributes for volume controls. If I go ahead and close up my Arnold tab and drop down my RenderMan tab, I've dropped the shading rate here down to one and the volume shading rate down to one. So I wanted to make sure there was a lot of detail in here. This isn't a super high detailed fluid, but there's a lot of little texture details that I wanted RenderMan to respect. So how are these differences in the render in the RenderMan shader setup going to affect our final output? Let's go ahead and take a look at our final render and you can see we've got a much closer reproduction of our original fireball. A lot of the texture information is exactly as expected. We've got a little bit less in the density of smoke, but that's again something you can change. And if we look at it side by side with that Arnold render, as much as I've loved working with Arnold, I think Fluids is a clear differentiator between the two. And it's something I hope Arnold will be improving in their next version. Now, our next talking point would be fume effects. This one's only gonna be a talking point because Arnold is the clear winner here because RenderMan is not supported by fume effects, at least at the time of this recording. I've been over their website, I've asked in emails for confirmation, and at this time, Mental Ray, V-Ray, Arnold are your rendering choices for fume effects. So if fume effects is a necessary part of your workflow and pipeline, that's going to make this choice really easy for you. Go with Arnold because it is a wonderful way to render your fluids for fume effects. And the last thing I think we should talk about is particle rendering. And here again, we're going to see a big differentiation between the two engines. As in, RenderMan will render all the different types of particles that Maya can throw at it, whether using dots, streaks, software clouds, blobby, spheres, multi-streaks, RenderMan is going to render all of them. The Arnold renderer at this time is still a little limited. It won't render blobby, clouds, tubes, numerics, or streaks. So if those are the types of particles you need to use, again, the answer becomes very clear. Jump over to RenderMan. So if you're doing something like points or spheres or quads, Arnold will render them and render them fabulously. The speed and quality are really great but this is a huge difference between these two at this time. And I expect Arnold again in their next version will get all of the Maya particles in. I'm fairly sure this is a for now thing. So which rendering engine should you use? I think this really has to come down to your workflow and your project needs. If you're doing heavy particle work or you're doing heavy Maya fluids work, I think you're gonna have to go over to RenderMan. If you're using Fume Effects, in your pipeline, I think it's very clear that you should bring in Arnold for that. However, if you're doing general hard surface or organic rendering, I think all three of the engines work really, really well. And I think it really comes down to your taste for which render ended up looking best and the extra steps that you're gonna have to deal with during the setups. So I think you need to decide what features are the most important for you and your pipeline. And of course, I don't think we can walk away without talking about price. Currently, a license of RenderMan is about $500, where a Arnold license is more than double that. But I would expect Arnold to have a response to this release by Pixar. I don't think that they're going to take it lying down, and I expect that these two competing is going to give us a lot of great technology for years to come. So I hope you've enjoyed today's walkthrough of RenderMan and the Arnold renderer. I hope you've learned something that you can use towards your work. If you have any questions, please hit me up on Twitter or Facebook in Google Plus or in the comments. And if you want to keep learning, we have more great tutorials and assets for you to use in your work at pixelbump.com. Thank you so much for watching. Go and create.